Hello, everybody. It's Friday, December 11, 2020. It's a great day to be a junior potter. Mr. Parrot here with your rundown of what we're doing today. Um, first off, make sure that you do your bell ringer. It's Friday, so I'm going to take a look at all of them throughout the week, so make sure that you've gone through and done all of them this week. Double check. That's always a good thing to do there. Um, today, what we are doing is a little reaction test. Um, and in order for you to do this, you need two things. You'll need a ruler or something that you can catch firmly with one hand. Um, that's preferably got a little space and isn't sharp. Um, a pencil probably is too short for this, so you need something like longer. If you have a ruler, that is the preferred method, um, just solely because it's going to be easier to do um, with the ruler because we're also going to get some measurements using these rulers as well. Um, but anything works. I'll show you a little trick to measure it if you don't have anything to measure with. Um, but you also need a partner because you're, a partner is going to be do, do, doing the dropping. So you need some kind of sibling, some kind of parent to help you out with the tests here today. Um, Speaking of tests, let's go ahead and take a look at what those tests and experiments are going to be for today as we are testing out our different reactions. On Schoology, you'll have your, on Friday, you'll have our different things from our bell ringer. You got this assignment reaction time experiment. That is what you need to bring up. Bring up the document here. Get rid of the rest of the stuff there. Um, so. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit nicer. Where did my zoom function go? There it is. Boom. Now you should be able to see everything on there. All right. So since it's an experiment, we got all of our stuff listed out there. We got our problem. Which sense will have the fastest reaction time, sight, hearing, or touch? So our hypothesis then is if a ruler is dropped, then... Pick which sense is going to be the fastest because, and then give a reason why you think that sense will be the fastest. We're first going to test sight. What you're going to do is partner number one holds the ruler out in front of you like this. They are just going to drop it randomly, and your job is going to be to catch it when they drop it. Now, if you're using a ruler, this makes it real easy because you just look at the top where you caught it from, the top line there, and you're going to measure it in... Um, Centimeters because that's going to be more accurate because there's smaller measurements when it's in centimeters there um, And because of my little trick that I'll tell you about in just a little bit So I got about 17 right there. What you're going to do is in this little chart It's already kind of filled out. This is Ewing must have been showing it off in a video earlier um, You're going to fill out the data table there. Okay, she must have been filling it out uh, For that like mine would be 17 in this case Here's would be whatever it is there. Um, and you're going to test this multiple times. So drop it again, catch, drop it again, catch measure, drop it again, catch measure. So you'll do this four times because you can see that goes pretty quick. Um, and then you're going to get an average. For your average, you're going to add up all the numbers. So in this case, 23 plus 28 plus 17 plus 21.5. Um, add all those up, get whatever number it is, divide that by 4. In this case, it would be 22. You're running 22. You're going to use this chart, which just takes you to another document. And you'll find what your number is on here. That one was 22, so it would be this 0.212 seconds is how fast your site reacted to the ruler dropping. Um, would you measure your reaction time? Because the table's already done a lot of the math for you, so you're going to add that into your reaction time at the end. Um, that's the first test. If you do not have a ruler in whatever you're catching, make like a, a mark or something with a pencil or something, and then what you can do is that your width of your pinky is about one centimeter, so you can count how many pinkies, it's not going to be as accurate as just catching the ruler, but it will give you some kind of idea as to 
how to do it and I'll show you. See, that's about one centimeter is my width of my pinky and my pinky is pretty big um, as far as thickness goes for it. Oh, fingers there um, are wider than they are longer. Um, so mine's probably on the bigger side and mine stretches a little bit over the one. Yours are probably closer to one centimeter than mine is there. Um, but you're just going to get how many pinkies there are. That would be about as accurate as we can be if you don't have any type of ruler whatsoever as far as centimeters go there um, with it. The second test you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing the same exact thing, except you're going to be doing an auditory test. So you are going to close your eyes. The partner is still going to hold it out in front of you and dangle it right above where their hand is at. And then they're going to say some kind of code word. Um, the go-to code word that we use is the word release. If you want to come up with a different code word, that's fine. But as soon as you hear the word release, they're going to drop it and you're going to catch it. So we'll see how fast you can catch it when you hear the code word. You'll do the same thing. You'll do it four times, get your numbers for each one, find your reaction time on the document. We've got our tactile field test then. How this one works, I'll try to demonstrate it here as much as I can. Partner one's still gonna hold the ruler out in front of them. Instead of sight or hearing, you're gonna close your eyes. You're gonna hold your hand out in front of you and then they're going to tap you on the shoulder. As soon as they tap you on the shoulder, you, they're going to release it and then you're going to catch it. So they're going to drop and tap your shoulder at the same time in order for you to catch it. That gets the triggering like we talked about in class for the sensory nerves to go all the way up to your brain and back down to trigger the grasping of um, the ruler. And actually it'll go from one shoulder down the other, from one arm to the other arm since you're holding it out um, from the other arm. So it's uh, getting the, the full scope of one side to another there. You'll do your reaction time calculations down below there and get your reaction time. There's then a set of questions for you to answer up afterwards. Um, so looking at things between the visual, auditory, and tactile, meaning sight, hearing, and touch, um, and then comparing the averages to the reaction time calculations. If you go down to the very last little bit, it gives about the average of kids of ages of 12, 13, 14, which is about, which is your age range there. And then how people ranked 20 plus years. And you can see how reaction times can differ and where you fit in with those calculations there. And then the extension is optional. You do not have to do this part. This is for time in class for those people in class that work a little bit faster than others. You can try catching two rulers at once, um, both with sight and audio. Um, with it, you do the same thing, except instead of dropping one, you drop two at the same time, and you track both your left and right hand. Um, so seeing if you are actually ambidextrous or not, which is being able to use both hands in a similar sense there, um, is what we're doing with that one. When you're done, submit it up online. If you have any questions whatsoever as you're doing that, do not hesitate to email me out. Um, but that is the assignment that goes along with everything there. I hope you're doing well, staying safe out there, and hopefully we'll see you next week before we leave for um, break. Um, but if not, hopefully you're staying well, uh, and I will hopefully then see you later.